Um, well, uh, welcome to all of you who have been here at uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Oliver's Food Revolution Day. Um, thank you all for coming out here today, and um, thank you to the organizers for inviting us to be here. We're really honored to uh, be here today to part of this. Um, as you said, my name is Ari Cohen, and I, along with my brother Andrew Cohen, we are the founders of Mr. Dewey's Almond Milk Ice Cream, and um, our ice creams, as I said, are dairy-free. They're also gluten-free, they're soy-free, uh, because there's no dairy in them, they're cholesterol-free. And unlike most ice creams that are out there, we, um, we have no additives, no preservatives, no stabilizers, no emulsifiers, um, no gums, and, um, and we pump no air into it either. Um, we can't actually legally call ourselves an ice cream. In order to be called an ice cream, you, you have to have a certain percentage of milk fat, dairy cow milk fat. And, uh, and as I said, we don't have that. So we call our product uh, Mr. Dewey's Almond Milk Frozen Desserts. That's sort of the that we use. Um, so now you know what we, we don't have in our ice creams. Let me tell you what we do have. And that is um, really good, healthy ingredients. Um, all of our ingredients are all natural. Um, they're mostly organic, and we purchase them all locally. Um, and that really was, that is our mission. Our mission really is to provide a great, rich, creamy, flavorful um, uh, alternative ice cream uh, that people um, can enjoy and know that it's, it's healthy and, and delicious at the same time. Um, the, uh, we have four flavors. Uh, that, we're, that we're currently in the market with at this point right now. That's mocha chip, mint chip, uh, uh, salted pecan, and a banana walnut. And again, all these are made with, um, with fresh, fresh ingredients like fresh bananas, fresh walnuts. Um, there's, no, there's, no, um, there's no flavoring. The pecan is made from real pecans and real almonds. Um, bananas are real. Um, the chocolate is real. Um, so it's, it makes for a really, really nice um, a really, really great dessert, and we're very proud of it. Uh, we did bring uh, those four flavors for you guys to try today, and uh, we'd love for you to give us your feedback and, and tell us what you think. Uh, I have to say, so far, we've been really, very pleasantly <coughs> surprised at, at the response to it. Um, we found that there are a lot more people than we realized who are who are dairy-free and, uh, and gluten-free for various reasons, and really appreciate this this ice cream. And, uh, and actually, many people who are not dairy-free or gluten-free we really like it because it's a really nice, healthy alternative. Um, okay, so let me take a step backwards um, and sort of talk about uh, um, sort of who we are, um, what we believe in, um, how we got here, and where we hope to go with this. Um, uh, for I think for many people, um, getting involved in, in, in purchasing and preparing and, and eating uh, and selling. Um, Good, healthy food. Um, for me, my journey started with uh, an issue of, of health. Um, I had a health crisis about 12 years ago. I was one of those people that grew up eating whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, and it wasn't an issue, at least, at least I thought. Um, but about 12 years ago, uh, I started having issues that I uh, came to learn were the result of, of problems with, at least partly, uh, and due to the foods that I was eating. I began to see a nutritionist and came to find that I, myself, um, am gluten intolerant, uh, dairy intolerant, soy intolerant, and um, maybe a few other things. But, uh, uh, and also it turns out that my children um, and the rest of my family, Andrew also is lactose intolerant. I'm probably gluten intolerant too, a bit when I admit that. Um, <laughs> the, um, so I started working with a nutritionist and that really, part of that, for me, part of the, the journey started with really learning uh, how to change my eating habits and to and to uh, to study food and to understand that food really is a medicine and can really heal you as well. And um, and with that, um, uh, I uh, the connection to the ice cream is is that I was unfortunately a big fan of cereal. I loved cereals, um, whole cereals and hot cereals. And, uh, once I cut uh, gluten and dairy out of my my diet, I didn't really have that many options. But I started finding other alternatives like um, hot cereals like amaranth and millet and even gluten-free steel-cut oats and, and other cereals. And I started making a, um, a milk out of pecans and dates and water. Um, and it was really, really good. 
Um, it's really, it's almost like a, a creamy, milky pecan pie. Um, you can imagine that. It really, it really enhanced the, the, the cereal in, 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 a, in a really nice way. And um, I, start, I made it for myself, and I started making it for my kids and for my family. And they really liked it. I started making it for friends as well, and they really liked it. And people started talking about, you know, this would be a great thing to, to give to other people and see what they think. So I, um, I took it upon myself to go out and I went to some, to some small uh, farmer's markets and, and sampled it and got some very good feedback on it. Um, <coughs> but uh, what I came to find was that as a, as a sort of a product to, to give to people, it really is something that they need to make themselves. It's all raw and it doesn't have a very good shelf life. And, and concurrently, while this was going on, uh, I had other people talking about, I mean, this would actually make a really good ice cream. Um, and so I thought, you know, that's actually a really good idea. And I, I like the idea because, again, because uh, I and my kids and family couldn't eat ice cream either because of the dairy component. Uh, I thought this would be a really nice way to, to include that in our lives as well. So, uh, with that said, I embarked on a mission to figure out how to make ice cream out of nut milk um, and came to find that it's not a very easy thing to do. Um, ice cream is um, it's interesting. Uh, what I came to find was that there are ice, literally ice cream schools, some very reputable, so Penn State University has a dairy program and with a specialty in making ice cream. And ice cream truly is a, it is a chemistry experiment. Like, like most baking and cooking, um, ice cream also is really a chemistry experiment. So I did a lot of research around that. I talked to a lot of professors at these universities, and I bought, I bought their book, uh, I bought the seminal, the, the, the Bible on making ice cream, which is very interesting to me because the cover of it is this beautiful picture of several ice creams and toppings and all these beautiful things that you open the book up, and it couldn't be any more boring. It is a, it is a chemistry textbook with graphs and charts and physics equations, and I'm like, oh my goodness. And in reading this thing, um, or dabbling in it, I came to find that um, there are some basic principles for, to making ice cream. You have to follow these principles in order to, to, to do it. One of those things uh, is you actually have to have some sort of sweetener. It is a dessert after all, and um, you must have some form of sugar to make it. Um, I won't go into the chemistry of it, but it is a very important piece of it. The challenge for me in learning about this was that, um, uh, as I think I mentioned before, we don't use any, I mean, I don't use any additives. I didn't want to use any additives or preservatives or stabilizers or gums, which most ice cream, not all, but most ice cream use. And that's a key component to it. That's how, that's part of the chemistry. So that was my challenge, was how do you actually make an ice cream that's rich and creamy and uh, the texture and flavorful and delicious uh, that is, um, that doesn't have all the elements that you need to make an ice cream. So um, that, that was a challenge for me, and that's, that's sort of where this began. I, I got went into our kitchen and began, uh, began experimenting with this, using these chemistry rules and experimenting with this. And the kitchen became a lab, and our freezer became a receptacle for all of my experiments, much to my wife and daughter's uh, dismay. Uh, it was not an uncommon occurrence to have uh, my, my wife and daughter walk down to the freezer, open it up, and hear them screaming and cursing my name because 20 pints of various flavors of ice cream and pouring out of them. Um, but nonetheless, I, I had to do this, and, and this was a part of the process. Um, the, uh, throughout that time, it took me about, believe it or not, about a year and a half, uh, almost two years, to, to figure it out and to come up with a, um, with a formula that I felt was really worthy of, of us, of our family, and of, of, of the public. And um, so concurrently, while this was going on, while I was making this, and this is where uh, my brother Andrew Cohen comes into this play. Andrew, as I said, was also lactose intolerant. And he uh, was just jonesing for some good ice cream and uh, didn't really like the alternatives that were out there. And he would come over and sample my stuff. Even in the early days, he would come over and taste it. And he would declare, this is the greatest ice cream in the whole wide world. Um, and it was really pretty bad, to be honest with you. So he had his work with very, very, very little credibility, I have to say. Um, but he, he recognized this as, as something, as it got better, and as the formula got better, and as the flavor became better, he recognized this as a really great product. And he saw this as a really important thing that pressed upon me to, to, um, to make 
and to bring to the public because he said, you know, there's a lot of people out there, more than I think we even realize, who could really benefit from something that, uh, that is a delicious ice cream alternative. So um, I, I want to just very quickly talk about Andrew because, as I'm saying, I'm, I'm sort of the, uh, if I'm uh, the uh, you know, sort of sensitive artist in this, if I may be so bold as to call myself an artist, Andrew is the, Andrew is the brain, Andrew is the business part of this. Andrew, Andrew was born to be in business. Um, I don't think he'll mind me telling you that Andrew, uh, at the age of probably about seven, to give you an idea of his business and his business style, he, uh, he would go to the corner store and he would purchase uh, two-for-one candies and then bring them back to school the next day, equipped with a cash uh, change money belt. <laughs> and he would sell the candy for a, a penny a piece and make 100% profit off that and make sure that nobody could, uh, could uh, avoid it because he had the change for them. He would then reinvest that in that and get bigger candy bars and things and make more and more money. Um, Andrew went on to uh, many successful businesses. In, uh, uh, he actually uh, graduated from high school early to start his first business. And uh, he's had many successful businesses, including along the way, um, uh, an aerobic studio, video production company, and intermittently he had four separate uh, sausage restaurants that he put together. And I used to tease him, I'd say, you know, Andrew Freud would have a field day with you. <laughs> and Andrew would just say, look, Ari, sometimes a sausage is just a sausage. So, um, uh, uh, again, I, uh, I had no business experience at all. Uh, my previous background was as a social worker. Um, Andrew had a lot of it. And Andrew, uh, has, we wouldn't be here today without him. Uh, I think the combination, we, we have a very good partnership. It's uh, the combination of, of, of my work with the ice cream and his business acumen and his sense and his passion and his drive. He's taught me so much about business and about being able to bring something like this to, to the public in a really effective and wonderful way. And um, I just want to say, actually, it's wonderful to be able to work with my brother. Uh, so really, it's a gift, I think, for both of us. And uh, I'm really, really happy to be doing this. It's still very early on in the process. We haven't had too many fights, but uh, uh, so far, it's, it's working really, really well. Um, so, um, okay, so I guess I'll bring it up to date, and that is that we've been in the stores now for about, about six months, and uh, again, as I said, it took about a year and a half to, to formulate this. We've been in the stores, we're in stores in the Oakland, Berkeley, El Cerrito, uh, Lafayette area, and we're also in, uh, in the Sacramento area, several stores up there. And um, we're demoing all the time. Andrew and I do everything right now. We are, uh, we manufacture the ice cream, we package the ice cream by hand, we deliver it, we do the accounting, we do the business, we do everything on our, on, on our own. Um, we recently just signed a, um, a contract to partner with another larger company. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it, Premier Organics. They make a line of high-end nut butters called Artisana. Um, they're, they're an international company, they're, they're wonderful. And we're really very proud to be partnering with them as well. Um, their mission is very similar to ours in that they, their, their mission is to put out a really good, high-end, um, mostly organic, in their case, all organic uh, food. And that, uh, that is where we are today. So, um, but, and we hope to be, um, you know, again, I, I'm just happy that people like the ice cream. Andrew's hoping that we'll be at some point below. Um, so, uh, with that said, um, that is who we are and that's what we're doing. And we hope you guys can come out and taste our ice cream when we're here today. Thank you very much. Yeah, Does anybody have any questions at all? Sure. I do. Um, because your ice cream is raw and made in small batches, what happens when you build the demand? Uh, how, how do your channels of uh, development and distribution affect the product? Which Sort of what got us to be overprocessed food in the first place. No, it's, a, it's a great question, and um, it, it is it is a complicating factor for us. Um, I think uh, one of the things is that the shelf life for our product is, is shorter than I think most ice creams. Um, uh, so far, the, what's nice about it is it, it is a frozen food, and so and we keep it frozen at a very 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 frozen state. In fact, we have on our uh, on our label it says you know for best results definitely let it sit for a few minutes to, to let it soften and become more creamy. Um, but to answer your question, um, it, it's, it's something we're just going to have to continue dealing with. We're, we're not sure. We're still small enough as we develop it, I think. Um, again, shelf life is still about four to six months. It's not like it's that short. 
But, we, but I think part of our marketing will be that it is a raw food and it's, um, in, its, in, in essence, and that it's not something that you're going to throw in your freezer and leave it there for six months and come back and eat. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's, yeah. that's sort of it. I have one more question. Uh, sure. How did Sacramento beat San Francisco in the marketplace? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's another very good question. Um, I have relatives who live up there. I don't know if you're familiar with the Nugget market, markets up there. Yeah. They're sort of a high-end market. They were very interested in it and very early on. And we have a connection to them, and they, they said that they would like to do it. We are, I mean, once we once we hit the ground running, I mean, once we get, get moving, San Francisco is, is the, our next place. There's several stores that we're looking for. Thank you. There's another question. What do you use to sweeten it, and how does the calorie um, count compare to regular ice cream? That's another good question. So, um, actually, that's part of the, a lot of the research that I did um, was on looking at sweeteners. And, um, and what we use is an organic, cane juice sugar. And um, I looked at the agaves and various other sweeteners. And uh, for this particular product, uh, uh, the organic cane juice sugar seemed to be the best, the best one I could find, and the, and the one that I wanted to use. Um, and um, in terms of calories, it's in interesting. What's nice about our, our ice cream is that it's very, there's no cholesterol. There's one or two grams of saturated fat in every serving because the fat is from nuts. So it's all really very good fat. It's, it's, heart healthy fat, in essence. The calories are similar, because you do have carbs and you do have sugar in here. Um, it is a dessert, and we don't get a, we don't deny that. It's not like this is the most healthy thing in the world. Um, I had somebody come up to me recently and say, um, oh, this is great, it doesn't have dairy, this is wonderful. My my, uh, my brother has stage four cancer, he can eat this. And I said, you know what, no, he should not eat this, because it does have sugar in it, and sugar is an, is, is an inflammatory. Um, so we, we recognize it is a dessert, it does have sugar, but um, uh, uh, the, a lot of the calories and a lot of the fat are, are, are very good. Yeah. Um, last question. Okay, a question about colors. Uh, do you add something to make a color of ice cream attractive or you keep it natural? Uh, well, you'll notice if you, if you go out there and try it, many people that the, um, the container for our mint chip has a nice green hue. However, our mint chip doesn't have any, have any uh, color in it. So it's a white and chip. So we don't put any any uh, color into it at all. Um, you'll, you'll see. Thank you. And you will be around, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine.